call to order the public hearing. This is on a closeout of the plan. Just give us an synopsis of what you did. Sure. Yes, thank you. This is the Armstrong Mobile Home Park um, Vermont Community Development Program grant, and um, it requires a public hearing to close the grant out. First thing I'd like to say is, is thank you to the Town to Select Board for supporting this. And uh, as with many of these projects, it takes a long time uh, to get through them, and we appreciate that the support was was consistent and throughout and to help us get over some of the bumps and hurdles. So thank you very much for doing that, working with us on that. Uh, the project is complete. Um, I have, if anybody's interested, the as-built and the engineering specifications for the final uh, underground wastewater and water systems that were redone on the property. There was also some rehab of the electrical pedestals and, and, and the buildings on the site. Uh, the project is now complete except for the closeout of the grants and some final uh, paperwork. Um, so we're excited to have that done and to be more in the operational mode. Um, this provides uh, housing for 18 families in town and, um, and uh, 16 mobile home lots, uh, the great majority of which are, are uh, home oh, you know, owner occupied. So it's one of the least expensive ways to own a home in, you know, that's available to people. Um, we've also been able, as a result of this, to work with folks on energy efficiency of their homes and turning over some of the homes that were in the worst shape and to try to find our better options for them. So we're happy to be able to carry on this tradition uh, that the Armstrong family, of course, started many decades ago, uh, and to sort of keep this available as a housing source. If anyone has any questions about the specifics, I'd be happy to try to answer them. But that's the project in a nutshell. Okay. Any questions from the board on the project? Okay. Thank you. Are the lawns and everything on them? Everything done? Everything's seated. And, um, and graded and seeded. Uh, we had a sort of a quirky year. It was either too wet or too dry. So we're gonna be having to do some more work, uh, some more um, work in the fall, but probably the spring. And we've um, gotten estimates from our uh, landscaping folks to help us beef that up in the next season. It was a rough year for construction, as everybody knows. So. Depends on what you're building, I guess. It depends on what you're building. Where you're building. And what you're building. Culture Committee briefing, which should not take very long to perform, and it was done at the request of one, one of our committee members. And the other is, the board would like to add Casella transfer station uh, repairs to new business. Uh, our representative from Casella agreed to attend today's meeting to provide information on what they propose to change at the transfer station. <coughs> Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to put it? Okay. I'm going to make a motion to approve the agenda with the changes. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Increase. Consent calendar. 
under regular meeting minutes, current tax warrant, and other warrants. There was one change that I'd like to point out. Um, shared the information with the board through email, but there was an update to the, um, the warrant sheet that was shared with you through email and the one that's in your packet. Uh, we had used the previous form and it had different names that, that are on the board now. So this is the updated form. Okay. Move to approve the consent calendar. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We got an old business art and culture committee briefing. Um, hi, I know most of you. I'm Tom Ayers, one of the three initial <coughs> members of the arts and culture committee uh, that was appointed by our approved by the select board in July. And first of all, I just want to thank the select board and, um, and Adolfo, town manager Bill Owen, for, uh, for seeing the wisdom of putting this arts and culture committee together. I think it's going to be a real um, solid contribution to making Randolph a magnet for arts and culture. Um, Sonny Holt, Susanna Colby, Gravel, and I are the first three uh, appointed members of the committee. And since July, we've been actively soliciting people who are interested in uh, serving on the committee, reflecting, um, as was directed by the select board, as broad as possible, um, a spectrum of all the arts, artists and arts organizations in the community. To date, through those efforts, we've identified 11 other individuals who've expressed an interest in serving. And um, we've already held one informational meeting with those folks just to kind of get acquainted and talk a little bit about the mission of the, commission, of the committee. Adolfo uh, advised us about the public process that was involved in officially making uh, people committee members. And we're hopeful that um, as the process requires those uh, committee openings to be warned and publicly advertised in the next few weeks so that we can have a new fully named committee um, in the wake of the October select board meeting. Uh, and check in the minutes of the July meeting. Um, <coughs> Checking in with Adolfo on those minutes, we noted that um, uh, the initial recommendation of the select board had been to have a committee of nine people representing as broad a possible cross section of the arts community as possible in Randolph. Um, obviously, our initial outreach has resulted in a significant amount of interest um, across the spectrum of artists in the community, and so. We're hopeful that the, uh, we'd like to request that the select board consider uh, capping the committee in size at 13 rather than nine. Um, we anticipate this is going to be a committee that's gonna require a significant amount of uh, volunteer commitment. And in the interest of having a broad spectrum of people on the committee and lots of worker bees moving forward, uh, we feel that moving the committee up in size to 13 rather than nine um, would be appropriate, particularly given the sizable number of people that have already stepped up. Um, and also wanted to let you know that we have already established a regular meeting day and time uh, and location. Uh, we're going to hopefully moving forward meet the first Tuesday of each month from 5.30 to 6.30. And um, in lieu of having to always try and book rooms here, um, we've reached out to Chandler and they're willing to um, host that meeting on the first Tuesday of each month um, at Chandler as seems appropriate given it's an arts and culture committee. So um, the only request we have of you um, this evening, uh, other, other than moving forward with uh, warming the openings um, as required by, by the process is to um, consider capping the committee at, at 13 as opposed to nine. If you have any questions beyond that, I'm happy to answer them. We've got a number of exciting potential projects that people have already brought to us, um, including the creation of a, um, potentially of a sculpture trail, um, which is something that has been talked about, um, particularly in the wake of the Randolph Region Re-Energized um, uh, sessions this past year, uh, and with 
the, the reappearance of the whale's tails up at exit four, um, and there are uh, one or two other proposals that are already um, sort of on the table for us to jump on and, and um, explore once the committee is formally constituted. Thanks, so. so, Tom, are the 13 people that are that you're looking at are those all different areas of the arts community, yes, or is there overlap? Like three of them are, you know, sculptors, and two of them are musicians, and that's exactly correct. We have um, we have two sculptors, an instrument maker, a pair of musicians, a folk dance instructor, a poet, a novelist, um, a fine woodworker. Uh, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some others, but they really run the gamut of, um, of the creative community that we have here. And we really made an effort uh, in that regard in reaching out to people that we um, identified in the community so that a whole range of perspectives are, uh, are reflected. Having read the paper today, did you think of Rishi Farrell as a Having read the paper today, uh, there was an article about Reishi Farrell. I don't know that Reishi was a, a approached. One of the issues with Reishi is that she's out of yeah. town half, you know, they spend, yeah. they spend a good chunk of the year in, down south, so. Just sorry to have her something. Yeah, yeah. Certainly it merits approaching her, or even John, and just you know, seeing if they might be interested <clears throat> in putting their names forward. Do you have any other committees that have this many people in there? So refresh my memory. Did we talk about like terms? One year, two year, three year, rotating? Did we, uh, I don't think we got I, that uh, deep into it, did we? No, not that I'm aware of. Did Susanna was about it? Susanna <laughs> was here at that July we meeting. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if we actually said how many would be one year, two year, three year. I, I thought we just decided that we would just let <coughs> people just stay on the committee as long as they want. More, yeah, unless, unless there was some reason to change it. I mean, that's how a lot of the committees work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. people are just the, the only committee I'm familiar with is the, the Economic the Development, Development Committee, which I not has term, or yeah, at least the Economic used Development to have term. has terms. Right. The right. Right. Yeah, Planning Commission. They're a little bit different, but yeah. what would be, what would be the, the, the reason for going to the trauma? Uh, just, just, you know, conservation committee, what are they, they terms? It depends, I think they have, uh, they have the statute, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think you have statute. I think you want to give the, the select board the opportunity to decide what they want the makeup of those committees to be, too, to some extent. You said you're on until you decide to jump off. Well, but we always, I mean, for the communities that don't have any formal structure, we just reappoint annually as, as needed. Once in a while, we don't appoint somebody. Yeah. If there's, if there's a problem or something. Problem or conflict. But you want to give them that opportunity. So are these one year terms then? So it's like one year and then you re up and if automatically if you don't? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be clear about what we're doing here. I'm not like putting somebody on for life here. The mar in March, you would. Either reappoint them all. What are you smiling for? Sometimes they're <laughs> somebody working for life. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. It's like, you know, maybe there needs to be a change sometimes. So I kind of just wonder are we going to reappoint or are we going to give them terms or what are we going to do? I like one year. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. The rec committee, the water sewer committee, the energy committee, they're all like just annual. Yeah. It seems to work all right. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm coming from. Are all the committees um, reappointed at town meeting day? I mean, essentially, that's when the terms yeah, run from. Right. Organizational meeting after town right, meeting. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Okay. Just, I, I recognize that 13 is a, is, is a sizable number for a committee, but um, I would just again reiterate, we've got this core group of very diverse people who are interested. Um, I, I don't doubt we would have any issue um, if more people come in, we're already at 14 with the three of us who are already on the committee. So it, it could well be, and I would say there are two or one or two people that are sort of 
I think, vacillating in their potential commitment, whether they would withdraw their names before next month or not. Um, but we really do envision this as being a working, you know, strong working committee, particularly on uh, on a project by project basis. But nothing prevents more people from coming in, right? You could have set nine on your committee and then have twenty people that are working. That's true, right? Uh, and I guess my concern going to thirteen is, you know, there's excitement of it now and all that. Two years down the road, are we going to be struggling with a few other committees to find people to, find people yeah. to fill yeah. thirteen? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a quorum, where are you? You don't have to probably vote on much anyway. But. Yeah, that's that's a good point. You've got to get quite a few there to have quorum. You can have alternates, right? Okay. So if the board would that's like, that's a good point. If okay. the board would like, we could um, we could uh, add the item to the agenda for the next meeting, and you know potentially have the board is interested in have a more in-depth conversation of the structure, the number of candidates <coughs> on the. The day of, a, of appointing members of the committee. Yeah, and I think we should have we should at least know who these people are, the resumes, that kind of thing. So I think that would be appropriate to yeah. make that decision a little further down the road once we have some more information. Maybe yeah. that group wants to talk about it. Maybe some of the ones that aren't ready to make a commitment to be there every meeting are more interested in being at the table and helping and not being named a committee member. Mm -hmm. I like <coughs> I like the idea of there being alternates because it seems like there's often committees where there's more of the people who would like to be on it than there are space and we can say as much as we like committees don't vote very much membership you know being an official member isn't really that important what's really important is showing up and being part of the conversation right um, but unless people are actually official members it seems like they tend not to engage so maybe this maybe having people being officially appointed as alternate members and it gives them that official status, even though they don't get to vote, and we don't have to expand the size of the committee um, and with, the, with those associated problems. And on the other hand, they're free to attend every meeting, as is anybody in the exactly. public. Exactly. And if we don't have a quorum, then the alternates kick Steps in up. and give us one. So, yep. exactly. so that's, that's, yeah. a, that's an interesting approach. Uh, is it the board's pleasure that we have each individual submit a that we've already identified, submit a separate application. As already, I've already provided, we've already provided the roster of interested people to Adolfo, but with just a one-line description of who I'm they are. I'm going to have a few, few, have a paragraph. Uh, yeah. Background, bio, something. I can, I can work with them to put that yeah, together and just put it all in one uh, bundle easy. rather than put the onus on them to do it individually. Yeah. Sounds great. I'd kind of like to see that. I think it's a great thing. I think it's, I mean, if you get that much enthusiasm, it's awesome. Yeah. So. I just want a structure that, you know, if you guys do get in a voting situation, you know, my concern is you got too many people, and, you know, it gets a little hard to make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other things around town that work that way, and I'm thinking we need to not get the number too high, but alternates, I think, could be a okay. good solution. Excellent. I'll, I'll listen Any other what time are you coming back for dinner? <laughs> just curious. My guests might have something to say about sharing their portion to okay. me. I'm the chief cook in tonight, so okay. thank you for moving it up on the agenda. All right. Appreciate it. We'll see you. Thank you, Tom, for all your efforts. Oh, I'm happy to do it. Take care. We're going to go to new business item B since our guest of honor doesn't show up and establish a task for you. Yeah, guess for the tax This increase in the school tax rate is crazy. Well, that's where it all came from. Yeah. Voters voted for it, right? You need to put something in the paper if they uh, complain of your school budget. Well, we stayed under a penny increase in the municipal tax rate right. this year. How cool is that? And a considerable decrease in the police district. And the police zero. district dropped 17.8 yeah. seven, cents yeah. with the changes that we've made there. And then the school tax jumps up 11 cents. <laughs> 
said, they voted for it. Make that right. Put something in the paper. Yeah, it wasn't us. So it wasn't <laughs> us. <laughs> Sorry, but it wasn't us. <laughs> and then voters voted for this. So I'm finally rating. Our local agreement went up a little bit was because of, we had some added veterans that we need to take care of. <clears throat> Went from like 24 to 28, so there was some extra money there. That was the only difference, really. The restaurant was too close. <clears throat> So the select board gets to vote on it, but we don't really have any choice. <laughs> yeah, this is what it is. Because we're not voting to approve the school tax rate increase. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So the numbers should be a little better next year because the state is going to Give us a little more money for that $20 million plan on the hill there, the new lab that will kick in next year. So that'll help our pilot program some. Hopefully. Then we have these new projects coming in the works. Free and foods. Gonna have an addition. Possibility of a hotel, motel, something happen there. Just right now. Yeah. So that should like the burden some. Seems like it just makes some good forward progress. Yeah, huh? <coughs> does, does anybody know why I'm looking at the last page with the big comparisons? <coughs> Excuse me. Does anybody know why the, I'm looking at the two school rates, the homestead and the non-residential tax rates, and from 19 to 20, the school rate has gone up a lot. That's what we were just talking about. But for the non-residential rate, it has not gone up very much. Why, why would that be? Reasons. Versus 11. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought they would go up in tandem together. Oh, they don't get the advantage of the school, right? They still pay for them. So, does that make sense to anybody? Why that would be so good? I should be able to take you on that. Not for you. The uh, homestead rate is based on your per pupil costs and the common level of appraisal. And so it's the, their per pupil costs had to go up significantly in order for the level of The town wide non residential education rate is not based on per pupil costs, it's more of a set number. So the higher per people cost you have, the higher impact rate. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know they were treated so differently. <laughs> yeah. Totally different calculations. Yeah. It's getting to the point where you almost want to be a non-resident. Almost. <laughs> Six one days in Florida will take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at those, yeah, if you look at those sets of numbers, the, 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 homes, the homestead rate's growing a whole lot faster than the non-residential rate. Oh, yeah. The non-residential seems to be three cents a year. <laughs> you want to know why people are moving out, right? And other people are moving in, right? Yep, well, that's a statewide problem for those of us like. And it really most is, because most, most folks... Yeah. Most towns are like us. And they're not Stowe's and Killington's. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you need a motion to adopt it? <clears throat> oh, sure. Oh, so moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody putting under purchase? <laughs> <laughs> nope, it is what it is. Right, Ed? Right, yes? For the pleasure to live here. Okay. All in your life. Yeah. Thanks,
how wonderful it is here versus yeah. LA. Right? Right? It's awesome here. I, I look at videos from the two and I'm like, trees, no trees. Concrete, <laughs> yeah. um, tree, trees. Golf, no yeah, golf, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that comes um, in price. Before Ed leaves, if I, if I could just remind the board that Ed is um, going to be retiring. Yes. Very soon. So this will I didn't see anybody accept that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. We figured if we didn't acknowledge it, it wouldn't happen. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's got his outside influence here, yeah. what I heard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Uh, that's right. Is that true? That's... I'm leaning now, right? Our house will be the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we defer permit, please? Uh, if, if I may ask the board to consider postponing or tabling this issue for a future meeting, um, I would like to point out that we have obtained some information, some general information to share with you now, nothing uh, to really focus on until the next time the board brings up this issue. But one is that over the last two years, repair costs for the two trucks that we were hoping to repair are in excess of forty thousand dollars. Is it? Yeah. Um, there's still some additional repairs that have not been added to the calculation that we have for cost for repairs. Um, so repair costs are considerably high. It's one of the reasons, or one of the reasons we're looking to replace the two trucks, but also a part of the information that we're looking to share with the select board so that uh, we can review the information as a whole, as opposed to just the bit that I'm sharing with you now. So. Wind River Sludge Disposal Payment Dispute. So we have here today, we have representatives from Wind River. We also have representatives from the town. Um, all parties that are here have been part of an ongoing conversation that uh, goes back several months. Um, and we'd like to share some, share some information with the select board. Um, if you'd like to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Are you? I guess, come on. Sure. Good evening, my name is Mark Farrell. I'm my colleague Jay. Hey, Jay runs the uh, Dimmick Wastewater Treatment, which is Wind River's Wastewater Treatment Plant in town. And uh, just to give you a little background on this, this situation we're in right now, I mean, Dimmick's been in town for about 20 years, providing septic treatment for the community and surrounding areas. Uh, we take that in and treat it, and then uh, appropriately dispose of the liquid in the solids. Um, in the last 12 months, we've also been going through a lot of effort to grow that facility, increase our permit, and hire people, bring more trucks in, so providing more employment locally. Um, one of the streams we manage there is the solids. Once we take the septic in, we separate the solids and send the filtrate or the clean water to the treatment plant. The solids, we have a couple of options on how to do that. We can treat it ourselves in-house, or we can send it out. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, at the beginning of the year, around um, November, December, uh, with uh, Suzanne and Robert Demick and the, the treatment facility, we looked at possibly um, finding a solution where the new modern technology that you have at your treatment plant, which is a centrifuge, might be a better way to treat that solids, and there might be some synergies with doing that, and possibly lower cost than, than us treating ourselves. So the, the group met, looked through all the costs, calculated what they thought the cost would be to take that waste stream in house and um, then developed a, a price that they presented to us. We evaluated that. It was a, a, just a, over a penny cheaper than we could treat it ourselves. So we thought that was a reasonable uh, approach. And we started sending out solids to the treatment plant to be processed through this centrifuge. A few months later, um, as the plant was carefully monitoring it, they determined that the costs were higher than what was originally calculated. And as soon as they did that, they notified us um, we, we, we realized that as soon as they called us, and we started adjusting our approach. So we started redirecting the majority of that back in-house, where we could treat it for a lot, much lower cost than the price that was being proposed. Um, let's just see. Um, so uh, the point that the reason we're here tonight is just talking about the time from when we came to an agreement on the price, 
and we started directing our solids to, excuse me, to the treatment plant until we were notified that the costs were high. So we had a price that was agreed, we were pursuing it, we were directing um, our waste um, material all into the town's treatment facility, um, and once we were notified, we changed that, part, that, uh, that approach, but uh, there's a question now about back charging, and we, we don't believe that's appropriate. Um, we can't go back to the community and say, hey guys, you're all gonna pay us more, because our costs went up. Going forwards, of course, that's understood, but retroactive is, is what we don't, we don't think is appropriate. I just to share with you was there an actual contract? No. no. But yes. everybody agreed the price was 85 cents? No, eight and a half cents. Uh, eight and a half cents. Yeah. And just another small note. Um, so we directed a, a, a large amount of waste through our plant to send to the town just because the agreement we had made and, and the price point seemed to work. So we were directing it from you know a larger footprint in the state you know, into our facility to process it that way, which we wouldn't have normally done without that arrangement. As part of the town, we have uh, Cliff Franklin, the finance director, and we also have Chris, uh, Chris Chambers, the uh, wastewater superintendent, who have been working with Jay and Mark on, on discussing the issue and essentially trying to find a mutually agreeable solution. So you guys want to share your perspectives? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris came to me at the end of May and um, the, the um, event that really caused us to sit up and take notice was the direction of the additional sludge. And of course, we're behind the timeline because we don't realize that until we get the bills from Priscilla for, the, uh, for the disposal of the sludge after it's been processed. And so um, Chris came to me and we started examining this, this process and discovered, of course, that our costs were much higher than the um, what was originally discussed, and you know, our understanding was that it was a preliminary rate that could be adjusted. And so we got in touch with Mark and let him know that our costs were higher, and we generated the bills um, based on those higher costs, uh, making, um, we used a calculation that was based on the 9% solids rate that um, their operator had shared with Chris that they were obtaining. Um, it came out later that there was some testing done along the way that indicated the sludge density was about 6.2% 6, 6 rather than the 9. <clears throat> when, we just, when we found that out, um, we didn't have anything to dispute that, and so we adjusted the, um, the back billings that we had presented um, for that amount to, to reflect that lower cost, the lower density. So you folks thought the 8.5 was a set rate, or did you think it was flexible? It was clearly a set rate, and there was no discussion around it. It wasn't a you know, variable, try it out to see how it goes. Uh, the sewer, commit, sewer Commission met on it a number of times, and even with Robert and Suzanne, who's on the committee, they recommended to increase it a little bit to the 8.5. It was at the beginning for it to be even lower than that. But there was definitely no try and, try and see how it goes. It was 8.5 and then if, if we find something different, then we can adjust it from that moment on, which, which is we're fine with, completely fine. One other comment just to add to that, the solids percentage that we referenced here, every single month we report that to the town. We probably we issue that as a, a lab result. So that wasn't sort of a ref, and after the fact thing, we've been doing that every month. So it's sending that in. If I could share with the board that uh, Communication has been ongoing. Um, you know, uh, Wind River has been very open with speaking with, with our team. Our team has been equally as, as open to sharing information. Our calculations, our formulas that we are using to base costs, we share them with, with Wind River. They review them. We've also spoken with, uh, then consulted for, for Wind River to share our information so that they could also review our facts and confirm that you know, we are accurate with our disseminating of information. So, Although we're still at, at, at an impasse, there have been credits issued based on changing of the formulas, based on changing of, of facts as they come out with the 9% sludge rate, 6%. Um, so it, it's not that this is a, it's not, it has not been contentious. It has been, you know, a point of disagreement, but 
we're still working still working well yeah absolutely there's no, there's no contention yeah we work very very closely um very very closely we go across and try and help out if we can we share information very much probably one of your biggest customers into the treatment plant with the, with the material we do send you every month so this is not contentious it's just it, and to give you an idea of how we approached it we got these bills we didn't agree with them we didn't stop for a second we paid them immediately and came up and met with you guys a week later saying hey let's just work this out so it's not contentious it's a it's a collaborative effort and it's just we're saying from the moment you share, they shared with us this is a change we're completely fine with it but i can't go back to my customers for three months and say i need to up your bills because my costs went up so retroactive is what i'm an issue with but going forward it's absolutely fine so the algorithm that was used to establish this that was shared with you guys right from the beginning or was it post facto after the, the error was noticed? No, the, the calculations, how it was, uh, the cost were determined were shared with us after the fact. The original estimates were done on a different on a different calculation. And did you guys see those estimates in those calculations? I don't think that was me. I think it was just a little bit. Casella, I mean, you, uh, it, it was the Water and Sewer Commission. And, well, it was originally proposed by NewTek, the okay. consultants for Wind River. They proposed the rate. The rate that we kind of looked at, they were it was actually higher than what we were looking at initially, but we weren't sure. And so, you know, we were kind of relying on new tech as well because it was a it was a big gray area for us. We didn't know what we were. So new tech was hired by Wind River. They were no. hired. New tech was hired. Okay. So, so if like, your numbers were lower. Than the eight and a half cents. My original and numbers that I came up with, but I looked, jumped. but I, I also went, I didn't, I, I was looking at them. And went, I don't know how to establish a rate. That, that's why I was kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I was no, you know. yeah, the numbers kind of made sense. I think they, they, one of the estimates was six, six or seven, which we thought was maybe too low. The eight and a half made sense because we know we can do it for ten. So. But it's not with less sophisticated equipment and other things like that. So they not to us sounded like a very appropriate price. Plus there'd be a benefit to the town as well. And both parties thought that by using the thicker material in the centrifuge, they would get drier material. It just seemed like a, a mutual win for both parties. So when you go to another facility somewhere to do the same thing, what are their rates? We we do it in house. Yeah. In house. Right. Yeah. And then did you check with other Systems. No, we just brought it back in the house. We have a press in our facility that can let us do the same thing. Right. So we just brought it back in the house. The town just had a technology that wasn't being utilized to the, to the best of its ability, and we had material. And we just thought that if we put the two together, it would, it would get them to the point they need to be, and, and yeah. it would save us a couple cents, right. and it would work for both of us. I mean, we saw synergies. The centrifuge wants to run continuously, and right. not front head didn't have enough, and then uh, combining the waste, we thought we get a drier waste, better odor control. So it looked like a synergy win-win, and the pricing seemed right reasonable. So we still plan to use it, but just not for the bulk of the material. We'll do the bulk ourselves and use it when we need to. So what did the, how did the 75-25 come out then? That was out of the committee? Uh, that was proposed by one committee. Do you know what the <coughs> rationale was for that percentage? There was no specific rationale. The way I can imagine it is if we could treat it for 10 cents, you know, that would kind of be the 25% of the difference. So one, one logic would be if we could do it for 10, we're paying it eight and a half, that difference would be kind of equivalent to the 25%. That, that's how I imagine it. So it's not hurting you in the end. If you could have done it for 10 cents, you're still capped at that 10 cents cost in the end you just didn't get the penny and a half savings that you no not completely because like they were saying we brought material from further field considering that the lower price here so if we didn't have the lower price we would have must probably taken it to Montpelier or somebody else mm -hmm. yeah. so so since we have had to change we have still brought material at the higher price we, you know, we still will but if we need to it's been a much smaller number it's been you know I think I think last month might have been sixteen thousand gallons we brought over, as opposed to before we brought over almost sixty thousand gallons of pickled sludge. So we're you know we're, we're capturing it from all over the state of Vermont, and instead of processing it differently, we're just bringing it all here to push through that. So 
So if you took it to Montpelier, what would they charge you? I don't know. Montpelier was previously was at six cents a gallon. They've done some upgrades. I believe now they're up to seven cents a gallon. Can, can someone clarify the relationships between the consultant that was originally used to help you determine the price and and the various organizations? Like I'm not, I still don't quite get what that is. New view, new. New tech was the prior owner of the business. Correct. Oh, they sold it to Wind River. Prior owner of. Correct. Robert Demick. Demick Dem Dem Septic was owned by was technically New Tech. Correct. That entity sold to Wind River. Okay. And it was New Tech that came up with the original. Album. Well, New Tech was involved in the negotiations. Or Robin. Yeah. It sounds like New Tech was. They were the people who had the expertise. You thought to come up with a price which was realistic. Yeah, I mean, when they proposed, because I admitted that from the get go, I didn't know how to set rate. I kind of right. did a half spreadsheet that I wasn't comfortable with, and then um, they proposed the eight and a half cents a gallon. Um, after we realized the costs were way up, I went to Cliff and I said, I don't know how to do this, and he kind of guided me to get the information together. and. That's when we realized that what was there was way off. Now, I would point out that the biggest reason for it being so much more expensive for us to process their higher percent solids, as it turned out, is the odor control that is enforced on us by Casella for disposing of the solids. Because it has to meet their sniffer test. However, that's done up there. It's, yeah. <laughs> and that. That has been an expense trying to find a chemical to help us neutralize that. That that was one of the tricks, and that's what really skyrocketed theirs up, was because they had so much more solids that they were bringing in, and I have to treat every bit of it to get the the odor under control. Which isn't a factor that you know either side would have you know foreseen okay. when the original calculations were. Yeah, but if really came in with an eight and a half cent a gallon rate using what information they had and the Montpelier rate seven, they probably were right in the ballpark of what was seen as reasonable at the time too. Montpelier's rate is based, Montpelier has one advantage that we don't have. They have what they call a uh, primary clarifier. Everything comes in and all the sludge and stuff that settles, settles out before it even gets treated through the rest of the system. They also have a, an aerobic Digester, which produces methane that they use for heat in their facility, electricity, that type of stuff. We don't have that capability. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where, that's another big difference between us and Montpelier. Unfortunately, we're not comparing apples to apples when it comes to Montpelier. To your point, Shreen, the information that was presented to the town wasn't an attempt to mislead the town, it was just an attempt to use standard information that is available, uh, facilities that most municipalities have. Uh, to treat these types of waste, ours just happens to be different. We just happen to have a very different type of uh, system. Um, we, we don't know why, but I think it was just the model that was engineered a few years ago, but it's very different from, from what we have since learned, different from the standard. In all fairness, I mean, the, there wasn't the, the knowledge really of, to, yeah. to operate it you know, to where it needed to be. So it was kind of a learning curve, which also kind of through the, the process on it. Where, where did the, the original impetus for this idea of working together come from? The collaboration between one of our operators and one of their operators that started talking about it. And so, and then we both sides thought it was a good idea. And efficiencies and systems, right? Yeah, so we, we, you know, they were looking at benefits. We were look, thought we were looking at benefits. And it just didn't end up. This is part of this close relationship, working relationship. We help out when there's need, they help us when there's need. So it's a very collaborative thing. And even in that discussion at the beginning, I mean, I know there was a new check there, there was uh, the sewer committee, committee was involved, the club was involved. Everybody's doing their best ability to estimate the cost. And as I say, if we, it was even proposed to put a little higher than the estimate because we thought it might be too low. So. And I guess that's where I'm challenged with the 75-25, right? Just like you not being able to go back and charge your customers, how do we push this on the sewer district to, to have to take this cost on to the folks that didn't have any sort of involvement in this? And if it really was a best effort kind of thing by both parties, 
I don't know where the 7525 comes from. Yeah, I think that was just a sort of a um, compromise that was thrown yeah. up at the committee. Um, I mean, similarly, we could go on the other way. If we'd said eight and a half and it turned out being five and a half, uh, we wouldn't be here talking about a rebate. If it, if it was a sort of, let's try this and see, and I would. the rate. <laughs> 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 but, but that was the agreement. The agreement was, here's the rate, and uh, here's the price. But he's hinted that the town made money on it. No, I know. And not going to absorb. I would as a business. As a business, you would. <laughs> Where's my missing body? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, so we're just looking for you know a reasonable solution to this going forward. We solved all the all the calculations we completed agreement with. It's just what we do for those few months where it was we were doing it one way with one understanding, and now there's this request for a retro. That's what that's what we're looking for. Um, anything else? We're at a point where, if I, if I could remind the board, because this is a part of, a, of an agreement and it's part of an evolving agreement, uh, the board can have a deliberative session during executive session to, to speak about it. Um, again, it, it is based on an agreement, so it is, it is appropriate to have that conversation. Uh, with but unwritten at this point, right? That's right. one of the things we should be doing, is getting exactly. some sort of team agreement written. Exactly. And then any decision made. The positive that both sides agree right. <laughs> to what the agreement was. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, it may be a mess. Yeah. Now, there's no decision could be made during executive session. It had to be made half, after the fact, but the board may have the opportunity to discuss this. Okay. But the Water Wastewater Committee made the recommendation to go for the 25 75 split. Yeah, it was a two to one. Members are on that committee. Like there's, there's, like three there. was there's four, four members on the committee. <laughs> Suzanne didn't vote. I, I proposed a 50 50 split. But my, my, my idea did not carry the day. Okay, well, we have a committee that made a recommendation, so. Mm. Recommendation that wasn't based on it. Except there's a couple now. Um, I I couldn't really speak to the to the, the rationale behind the 25 75 that that John Lutz had proposed. I don't know, a little bit. I couldn't speak for him. Um, but Mark, you're saying that was based on a 15 cent or one and a half cent. I wasn't at the committee at that meeting. Unfortunately, I was traveling that day, but I interpreted it to be that. Yeah, I don't know what the volume is over that it's, time, so I'm not sure I can calculate it. Yeah, it's it's not it's not actually. It doesn't actually, it's not too far from that, but it's Close, not, right. but it's not, that, I don't think that was the, the intention, it was more of just kind of throwing them out of the dirt. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, my, my, my thinking during the meeting was that everybody went into it trying to do the right thing, didn't work out, and it didn't seem like anybody, it was really anybody's particular responsibility, kind of everybody was all in it together, and yeah. I thought, you know, the town would could eat half of it, and the river could eat, could eat half of it, and, and in fact, you know, the river would, um, their, their, their total cost that they had done in-house at, at 10 cents, they, they still, um, you know, got that penny in half with the original number, so, so at, the, at the end of the day, um, we were looking at $18,000 bill, um, to win river, and if we split it nine and nine, minus win river savings, um, the town actually the net cost to the town was actually still higher if we split it fifty fifty. So my thinking was that fifty fifty is pretty fair. Our biggest concern with fifty fifty was that we weren't operating under regular conditions. Just the fact that we had brought in so much volume made it exorbitantly higher than it would have been if it had just been a normal operation and it, and it kind of went the way it did and, and you went 50-50, that's one thing. I mean, we, we purposely drew in so much more than we would have if not for that, if not for that agreement. Was the intent of when you brought it in to save money on the disposal costs or to get the volume in that was it, seen as being needed both. to run this? It's both. Yeah, it's we're, both. we're trying to expand the plant out of the same Correct. Area. We just increased the permit to 20,000 gallons a day and, and paid for, paying for that to increase. So, you know, we're really trying to grow that business. 
and bringing the material in, bringing the volumes up, was all part of that strategy. And with the sludge cost is also the, the effluent, is, we still pay for that to go to the, to the plant as well. So it's, it's a, you know, it's two costs, really. So you had to pay a higher cost on the effluent side, too. Well, more, more, volume, more volume makes it higher, but yeah, yeah the, the, the scent volume is still the same. So the bill from the town is bigger for the water. It's higher. Yeah, exactly. Am I missing something, or was the agreement was eight and a half cents? If the town agreed to do it for eight and a half cents, then the town agreed to do it for eight and a half cents. We shouldn't even be talking about an additional bill. I'm missing where we really have a leg to stand on for the additional bill. Well, while we say that the That's agreement was agreed upon, it doesn't sound like it was. One thought it was a try and adjust, the other one thought it was a firm fixed rate. That, that being said, the, the adjustment didn't come to us until June. Because mm -hmm. of the fact that we talked about it. Right. So, I mean, it, it, we didn't have a problem with them noticing there was a different rate and, and adjusting it. But once they adjust it, that's that's fine. But we were built backwards from that point to right. when we first started. Yeah, we're not trying to hold the. So then, in. your it seems like though your agreement would have been for actual costs, like the process versus <laughs> cost plus versus firm fixed, right? <laughs> or time and material versus firm fixed. Just putting myself in the business side, I don't know that I would have moved forward with it if I had the impression I could beat back the twenty thousand. Okay, so what's this word? But again, I don't, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> the same thing from the other side, right? The water. Is when they take it on, if they thought. But everybody took thought. on all this, right? And you had how many meetings did you have to set the rate? To set the rate, it was a proposed rate um, by New Tech, and then we went into the Water Sewer Committee meeting and just kind of, and everybody seemed to think it was a good idea, but nobody we really knew what we were going to do. It was also somewhat based on certain machine parameters that we didn't realize we were going to have to change as well, which heavily affected things. The initial one was that it was the idea of this is the price. It was never, you know, we'll determine the price later. Uh, I look at the documentation, but I even believe there was a letter with the price written in that was exchanged. Yeah, but out of maintenance agreement, that we didn't end up, we kind of ended up, Adolfo and I talked about it, and he was comfortable with the maintenance side of it. So we ended up saying, no, we're not going to go with this. Right, but there was two parts of it, right? There was a price for the treatment and then there was the maintenance part. Even though we didn't go forward with the maintenance part, it, 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 everybody knew that the eight and a half cents was in, and it didn't say eight and a half plus whatever it, it, it turns out to be, it was just eight and a half cents. So, it might, at least from my interpretation, I understand reading that letter and the discussions held back and forth, before it was worth eight and a half cents. Uh, my memory is fuzzy. The only thing I can say is that it was my failure for not having the agreement put in memorialized in writing. Um, you know, it would have cleared up some of the issues that are occurred now and bring it to the letter. I think it was from the river to the town. I think so. That put the rate in? That, that recorded the rate, yes. I believe it was. I'd have to see if there's any yeah, other rate. Rate makes no different than any other sewer rate. You establish a rate, right? Yeah. So you have to look. We, we look at the ladder. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I might do. Uh, we also should probably look at the minutes. Like yeah, we go with all that stuff. All the rates matter. Anyway, it just seems like <clears throat> this really is a partnership between two organizations. Yeah. They both went into it trying to each benefit the other, and it, it didn't work out. And. It just seems like each side should share in the fact that it didn't work out. Why should the ratepayers have to come up with all the money? Um, because this plan, which is largely, you know, okay, but created by... Isn't there an allocation fee paid to? I'm not sure what that uh, I, I would have to double check the fee. I think there was. 
it was done over time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was over time. Yeah. Yeah. Made the agreement to yeah. do it over time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the sewer bill. And, the other mm -hmm. and you increase the, <laughs> the other charge. Correct. Because they brought in the additional um, volume. Yeah. And our intention is to keep the volume up that we've got up in the volume to the treatment plant. So the increased bills to the town are going to continue so for the regular but no more treatment with the expansion we made. We you know, brought in new drivers, trucks, <coughs> and invested in the plant. So there's going to be a step change in our contribution to the town too. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to get to the bottom line of how we came up with the 2575 split. That's the part that I'm like, the Water Sewer Committee made a recommendation. Well, the Water Sewer Committee made the recommendation, but did yeah. you guys agree to it? Is that we would agree to the, to the 2575. The 2575, your guys are okay with. Yeah. Our sewer committee made a recommendation. So, in my mind, I'm not thinking I'm going to second guess the water sewer committee here. So, I would probably at this point say no. I think we make the move to uh, take their recommendation, and uh, that's it. And then move forward with the process. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree. But you don't agree, so I know that's why I'm yeah. kind of wrestling. No, I mean, I think that you know two things. One is, you know, I don't know what values their customers over our mm -hmm. our taxpayers in this. You know, there's nothing written. There's two perspectives on how the rates were addressed. Achieved. Right. When we write contracts and we have services like this, use fees are applied. And if we our use fees are more, we go back and we charge our customers more for those use fees to make up the delta. If there's not, then you know, we credit the customers back with their the delta. Okay. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, I understand the business model. I get it. Right. And I understand. And the the only thing that I'm waffling on is you know you guys made a decision to bring more in, right? And if our bills were monthly or notice monthly, right? You know, would be caught earlier, and I you know that impact would have been seen, and and their methods changed. You know, typically, when something new like this, you try it out, make sure it works. Right, and it's all economically advantage, you know, the economic advantage yeah. is really there. Give you that. Rather than going all in with sixty thousand gallons or whatever. But if we didn't bill for four months. Well we did we did get bills every month mm -hmm. and, and I and we paid the bills every month. And then this whatever issue was happening with the process and the cost wasn't caught until about five five, six months. So it was an anyway. additional bill that came on. Correct. After. I paid okay. all the bills as they hey, came. Gotcha. And, and so monthly I was bill. The, the ramp up of the amount going in didn't hit until later in April, so we didn't see the effects until late in May, early June, and that's when we started addressing it. So January, February, March, the amount of sludge being brought to the treatment plant was not as high as significantly lower than it was in April and May. So we didn't see a rise in cost in those months? So how can we go back and bill them for it if we didn't have a rise in cost to process it? We didn't see the rise in cost stream. In those months that we didn't have months. a rise in cost. So that so we became have seen apparent it. when the, when the volume increased. When the volume increased. Yeah. We, we ran into, one of the, what happens is, is so, the percent solids that comes into the centrifuge, our wastewater facility generally puts in between 0.5 and 1% up to 1.3% solids. Um, but usually we're not on that higher end, we're right around 1 to 0.8, that's our average. What happened was when they started initially bringing their sludge over, it didn't bring our percent solids to a point where the machine was overloaded. And then all of a sudden, about mid to late April, we started having process issues throughout the entire facility. Um, so we were chasing those, and then, all, then we, we, you know, process elimination, we came back to the centrifuge, and we found that what they call centrate, which is the byproduct water that comes back to the facility, looked just like the sludge going in, because the machine was being overloaded because the percent solids were too high, the machines rated for only some XYZ percentage which is what threw everything into a whole mix. And us not having, you know, from startup, the engineers were fired up and go, and it was all preset and little tweaks, but nothing to account for a lot higher solid floating, which is what really threw things into a pickle for us. Then obviously the increased disposals, stuff like that. So when they started, you started bringing more, you increased your volumes in January, we started bringing it in January. 
Yeah. And so when that volume increased, you saw no change in the plan. There wasn't enough to see on our end to see the increase. We saw a little bit of a, I think we had one more dumpster go out, but the cost of it was, it's a hard thing to gauge. When, like and also like when we order polymer, polymer comes in four barrels a lot and they last several months. It wasn't until then that, you know, it started getting used up a lot faster. But actually, it's funny, we actually saved on it because our usage rate went down, but we had to use it more frequently. So that's a technical thing. Mm -hmm. you know, my, my, my understanding when we have, when we have the community meeting is that <clears throat> everybody agrees that um, everybody was acting in good faith. And everybody agrees that no one was was doing anything negligent. Everybody was really doing the best that they could do, and just this was the result, which is kind of something that blindsided everybody involved. Yeah, I kind of believe that. I mean, I just I don't think too, there's any sounding need. like some of the time when they were first ramping up in January that there wasn't an additional cost to process it, that the plant was handling it, everything was going along good. And then as they continued to ramp up at some point, that cost became an issue, but not maybe in January. <coughs> well, which one of the things that, towards sorry. a different percentage. One of the things that we caught was before embarking on all this, our cost per gallon was actually very high for a centrifuge. One of the hopes was that overall they would bring it down. And it didn't necessarily bring our cost per gallon down because of the way we were handling our stuff. It was after the fact that we learned what has going on, we've actually been able to drop our cost per gallon now. Um, because we were running, we've now, we're thickening it ourselves in our aerobic digester to try and get it up to that one, one and a half all the time that theirs was coming in and bringing it up to almost a two so that we can optimize the machine, because apparently if you don't optimize it, it doesn't work right. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever bothered to tell us that until after this was a problem, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you got a brand new toy, you gotta figure out how to use it. Right? Right. <laughs> but in January, um, we actually used the same amount of polymer, which is kind of one of the other big expenses overall in it. And we used the same amount of polymer through the month of January, February, March that we normally did because they didn't bring it up there. So actually the cost to treat per gallon for their stuff was even higher. We just didn't notice it because it wasn't until after the fact when all of a sudden it thickened and we started seeing the higher disposal costs. And the calculation that Cliff and I came up with takes that into effect. But we didn't see it at that time just because it was more of a physical in front of you thing that we didn't see at that moment. Mm -hmm. We have some time to digest this one and talk about the next one. Let's we'll see the minutes, I think, from you. Yeah, I need a little more information. It'd be good to see the letter that's being talked about in the minutes from the Water Sewer Committee mm -hmm. and anything that came out of them sure. supporting this. I can compile that information and bring it to the board. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. We won't Thank have you. a solution tonight. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Maybe next one. Okay. All right. Stay tuned. To be continued. Can I ask a question while we got these people right here? What does it mean for the future? Have this option? Do we need to charge more? I'm sorry. What does this mean for the future if we decide to do it? Do we need to charge more? Is uh, yeah, I mean, we're all in understanding. They said the rate is 21 cents. It's actually changed from the 21.5 to 21. It's actually changed from the 21.6. It's been, been reevaluated. I believe it's 0.1815 at this point. Something like that. And to that point, um, we were 
a rolling calculation way it's slow coming in, so yeah. we have a good handle on that. But they would use real-time information to make business Correct. decisions. And we provide the testing as well, for, so everybody will have all the information, and you know, we'll be able to perform that well. But to your point, from the moment we were notified, we have no problem. We'll pay the rate, and we thought it. it's just up until June, July, June, whenever we got notified. So from that moment on, as soon as we made aware of it, we're fine. But so you're making a business decision right. at that point. Right. You know what the impact is, the right. decision you're making. Going forward. So the rate's not in dispute today. We're absolutely good with the rate today. It's just that those few months before we were told that to change. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Any briefing from the finance director? You guys are all good with me. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we're good. Uh, all right. You see, you Mary. Yeah. You can see the life. So, um, Jim, get us all this stuff in the air. I'll come out and make the meeting minutes from Waterways, Water Service Committee, and letters. Yeah, minutes maybe from the previous, the Water Service meetings where this was discussed with yeah. Robbie and everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe it's just okay for everybody. We have a, just a very, very brief um, delivery exactly. session. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, well, we were talking about not, not doing it. Okay. I think for this particular case, the point is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm back on the hot seat. <laughs> it's all yours. This time you don't have any buddies. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I met with, when I came to you before and back in May, I talked about what we had for a primary year audit, um, with the weaknesses in internal control. Um, the transactions that have not been recorded, and I strongly suggested and committed to making changes that would um, fix that. So tonight I'd like to talk about some of the progress my department's made to date. Um, on July 1st, actually July, July 2nd, that's a nice new competition. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I renumbered the entire chart of accounts for our accounting system so that it makes more sense. Um, it's easier to use. There's consistency across all of our funds so that if you've got telecommunications in one department and one fund, it's the same numbering system is used in another fund so that it all fits together. And if somebody wants to know what we're spending on that particular line item, I can tell you with a push of a button. Um, so that, that was a massive undertaking. I renumbered. I deleted probably about 2,000 accounts that were no longer being used, renumbered the remaining 1,600, made some mistakes along the way, <laughs> got to fix a few things. Um, but, but it is working quite well, and I think the department heads are really like it, and I certainly am. I'm sure the budget committee is going to love that. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're working with it. <laughs> okay. And, and that, you know, to your point there, Perry, um, we're resuming the budget committee meetings this month. Good. Um, I've, kind of put them off for a little while until I could get my arms around things and get some confidence in the numbers. That's great. Um, so, additionally, um, all of this stuff that was called out in the audit report, I've addressed about 99% of it. Uh, still got a few things that are going on. Um, some of it is related to just how municipal accounting works with um, you can't, the 60 day rule, which means that you have to wait until 60 days after year end to figure out what your tax revenue is for the prior year because anything that's not collected within the first 60 days is not considered as a current currently available for the prior year. Um, uh, what else? Um, the pension information doesn't become available until November, so that's not recorded, but it will be as, um, before the audit this year. There's also unbilled waste and water and wastewater revenue that, um, because we build on a quarterly basis for each of the routes, some of it, that, um, the July billing, two months is unbilled as of June 30th, so we have to adjust for that. That's been done um, as we speak. Um, there was a number of prior year deficits related to grant funding um, that's been addressed and fixed. And, uh, most of it was related to 
the town's share of money related to a grant that wasn't properly transferred into those funds. Uh, so we have moved that to a place where they will extinguish themselves naturally. Uh, right now, um, for fiscal 19, you will be happy to know that I am um, projecting surpluses in all of the funds except the landfill fund. I'm sorry, the landfill fund is also on a surplus. I discovered that when I was thinking, how did that deficit happen? So um, it was a, one more adjustment um, that I hadn't done yet. Um, so for the future, um, I'd like to see an audit committee. Um, and I'm going to suggest that. That would be someone, a committee of probably three members, one of them being on a board board, somebody with a financial background that will know what they're looking at, um, and they will oversee the audit rather than my office getting the reports and then holding on to them like has been done in the past. And I don't think that that's the proper way to go about things. Not very independent. No. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a reason why the budget committee can't, can't do that? Is there a reason why? Um, only that, um, and, I'm, and I'm still new to the process, so I'm not sure how much input they have into next year's budget um, or, and that process. And so it may be a case of them looking at their own work, um, which would be problematic. You know, I see it as an independent. They're different functions, too. Yeah. One is just setting a budget and seeing how you track. The other one's actually needs to help respond when there's deficiencies, not just in your budget, but in internal controls and how things are being managed, those type of things. It's a more, I think it's a heavier lift on an audit committee than it is on a budget committee. Because the budget committee is putting together the numbers and recommending them to the select board, having some of those discussions on how we're going to, what should we take money from to balance this, and where should we be doing different things, whereas an audit committee is more on your financial credibility. It's in and out of your accounting functions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. One's numbers, one's more function. Mm -hmm. It might be able to be the same people on two separate things. Two different characters. And they always send the work that I do. Yeah. You know, making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, Adolfo's doing what I'm <coughs> supposed to be doing. And if we're running the audit and being responsible for it, it's kind of like the fox watching the hen house. Mm -hmm. So um I could also add just one thing. Uh, the budget committee is elected at town meeting, or a member is elected at town meeting. And the audit process is really to, to make sure that, that the board, the employer of all the town employees, make sure that we're all doing our job. So another benefit of having a committee of the audit appointed by the select board is because they would essentially be your arm overseeing us during our work. So. Could be your preference on committee members and their expertise as opposed to a general election that may not see appropriate people elected to the office. So, is this a committee that would form and be around just for a few weeks and then be unheard until the following year? Generally, they wouldn't have that long of a period of time if there's a problem such as what we've had with, in terms of uh, material weaknesses, they would have to get involved. To, on how, how that was going to get addressed. The hope would be that they only have a Once a year. Once <laughs> a year. But in this case, from what we had, they would have a life for about a full year to help straighten out the traffic and how grant funds were being tracked and <laughs> activities, that type of stuff. I said, I think we could probably find a few people that could be qualified for that. It's not that big a task if they were to only have to deal with a few things over the course of the year, a couple, three weeks here and there. 
The committee would, would have to be advertised similar to the Arts and Culture Committee. Uh, we'd have to advertise the positions. The board would then have to interview candidates during, during a meeting, but to Perry's point, we have had professionals in the town that have financial backgrounds and expertise in finances that have served in previous committees, temporary and long-standing committees. So I do feel that we have the population in town to fill this committee with professionals who, who do this work. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. And through that end, um, we're making changes in processes upstairs to um, address some of these um, issues with internal controls to make sure there's a proper separ separation, proper review of things um, before they get into our accounting records so that there's fewer mistakes. And hopefully we're being more efficient and more effective about it and getting the classifications of, um, of the expenditures right the first time instead of going back and fixing them. I like you know, if you change all the numbers, it's going to take a little time, right? <laughs> it does take time. It takes a little yeah. time to, to learn what the new codes are. The, um, but, but because there's so much consistency across the front. Yeah, maybe it's easier. And, and the protocols are, um, with, with the numbering scheme, are very clear and easy to follow. And it makes it so much easier that when you're trying to code something, you look at it and say, okay, that, that was this and this one, it's this and this one. I'm anxious to see it. <laughs> Keep working on it. <laughs> um, and, you know, doing that really helps us use our software tools that we've got upstairs and um, to become more efficient, more effective, be able to give better um, timely information to make, um, to help the decision-making process. It's very difficult to make decisions when you don't know how much money you have. Yeah. Um, you've probably noticed that our warrants are now on a bi-weekly schedule. Every, every other week we have a new warrant coming out. Um, we've tried to um, coordinate that with the payroll so that we're doing all of that information at one time and we're not having multiple warrants for similar types of things. Um, we are currently working on the, still working on the um, April storms for the damage for the FEMA reimbursements. Um, that is actually um, going fairly well. Um, Bill Morgan, the highway superintendent, did a great job of capturing the data, and I'm helping to assemble that in a manner that um, FEMA wants. And we've been to a number of training events for the finance department, and we'll continue to do that as we learn as we go. <coughs> <coughs> um, oh, sorry. No, and I'm pretty happy with what's going on upstairs. I've had one employee retire, as we know, after 33 years with the town, and um, I continue to hope that we're going to be able to absorb that position. Just sure. Not I'm not sure with that yet, but I see some light at the end of the tunnel. I can share with the board that uh, Cliff has been. Just a magnificent addition to the team. He's really taken the position and, um, you know, not to be critical of his predecessor, but he's really modernized the role. He's brought a new set of skills that um, the town at this point now needs. Um, he's made, you know, it's been, it's been a heavy lift with some of the, the challenges that exist in the town. And he's made do with one staff member, has increased her, her capacity for work. and. Uh, the culture and atmosphere in the finance department just in, in town hall is just more positive. So cool. he's really been a great addition. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Questions, comments? Keep up the good work. Looking forward to the next audit. <laughs> <laughs> Something you don't hear very often. Uh, to, to that point, um, our, current auditors, <laughs> our current auditors, um, I put them on notice that they are going to deliver the reports to this body, um, and they will brief you on what they found upstairs. I think that is appropriate. Um, that's the right way to go. And we currently have an RFP out for audit services for fiscal 21. Okay. Fiscal 20, sorry. Okay. We'll see where that goes. I have a related question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Northfield Savings Bank and their handling of the funds, are we going to hear back from them? Landfill funds? I thought they were going to 
look at what we sent them and come back with any suggestions they have. They provided a proposal. Uh, we're, we're discussing the uh, Northfield handling the town's investments. Yeah. Um, Pat had asked if we plan to invite them to come back. To, to address this board. Right. Um, what they're proposing with the funds and so far. We had met with them, Adolfo, Joyce, and I met with them in July and explained to them, shared with them what our visions were for how those funds should be taken care of and invested, and they are making adjustments now to adopt that. And one of the things that we talked about was um, income-based, um, limited exposure to risk, and, and also to have some liquidity in there as well. And they are working on that. We've seen the effects of that in the August statements, but we're working on reconciling that. Department Youth Training Program. There is someone here that board members may know, uh, Chief Michael Hildenbrand, to, <laughs> to talk about some of the work that uh, he and his team have been pulling together uh, to potentially establish a youth training program within the uh, village fire station. Um, we have shared this information with the local cities and towns. And uh, uh, the information that is in front of you has, you know, again, been vetted and uh, shared again with, with the chief for his comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Michael Hogenbrand, Randolph Village Fire Department. Um, we are interested in starting a junior program. Uh, we went down to the school a couple years ago and met with a couple of classes and mentioned that we were doing it and like five or six cans flew up like hey we want to do this you know i'm, I'm sorry you know you probably graduate by the time we get it done but uh uh there was a lot of interest uh for the under 18 year olds uh so we've uh, over the last few months we've been looking into uh the information i had adolfo contact plct i talked to jim Karen of plct as well he's he sent me 15 different documents about it um so did uh, wayne mazur Missouri, something like that. And also I reached out to Vermont State Firefighters Association and several of their board members sent me information about their departments and other departments in Vermont. And I even got some from, one of them sent me something, a model from Michigan. So we put together a lot of information and we're at the point where we're ready to form a committee and talk to the other departments in town. But I didn't want to go down the road if the board was like, no, this is a really bad idea, we don't want to do it. I didn't want to put in all the work and put together a 60-page document and, and for no reason. So really, I'm just looking for a blessing to move forward with it. It's not an approval of the final document. Obviously, that will come back before um, through Adolfo to the board for a review at that time. But it's just more of a blessing to do the work that, it's, that you're open to the suggestion and for us to put in the work. What ages are you looking at? Uh, 16 and 17. There are certain OSHA and VLC requirements. Um, OSHA 16, under 18 year old can't work on a roof. Uh, VLTC, VLCT says they can't drive a truck. So there's very narrow things that they can do, but uh, it gets them involved in the fire service. It's a, it's a declining um, enrollment across the country. And uh, we think this is a way to get people interested in doing it. You can drag and roll hoses, right? So they can wear an air pack, yeah, but they, they can't go in a building. But they can't go in a building. They can go up the ladder, but they can't work on the roof. Yeah. And they can fight fire from an exterior standpoint. Which, uh, um, as uh, Assistant Chief Fordham can attest to, we had a lot of people outside the building over here. Um, you know, we had eight guys in the building, and we had 20 guys outside the building fighting that fire. So. There's a lot of need for non-hazardous yeah. situations. I think it's a great program, so I support it. You can say firefighter one to 17, too. Yes. Plus, they can drive to the station and go got to pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the parents don't have to drop them off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like instead of going to soccer, we're just going, hey, we're going to a fire. A basket and they can't do the part of the test where they got to get on the roof. Right. Okay. 
Um, Bethel has a program. Um, they have some restraints for kids leaving school and things like that. We'd probably look to do the same, the thing, same that thing. You're not looking to get out of school because the tone went off. So, but uh, um, everything else is on the table. I think you got to start. I think you got to do it because I think that you need to engage these young folks and stuff like this. Yeah, because everybody's turning into Larry and Mike. I see it. So yeah, you can get them involved. And I think there's a, I think there's a lot of young kids in the community that probably, given the opportunity, would probably uh, jump at that. I think it's a good hope to keep kids in the community. Yeah, young people, exactly. Right? So. Well, a lot of kids need something to be involved in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, that gives and them a purpose. The yeah. fire department is kind of like another family. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. you know, community too. Technical school, we used to have something that uh, would tie in with this, right? But it doesn't have that anymore. It's not in person. Right. And VTC just graduated their last fire season. Their last fire yeah, this, this year. year. I, think they're, I think they're moving to Wilson. I think they may be moving to fire. Probably I think it's entirely just, I think, oh, entirely. I think done. Mm. Well, all the more reason to, yeah. to engage yeah. them. Do it. Yeah. Can't imagine what the downside would be. Yeah. Thanks for taking the song. 60 pages, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Golf's about over. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, actually, many of the ones I've looked at already are less than that. Um, I'm sure you can find some. What's that? You said it's going to be 60. It'll, it'll be close to that once you throw in all the parental consent. You can find somebody to pick back up. Just double space. It'll take quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. So you so, got my blessing. Yeah. So I guess it all fall kind of tangential to that, the uh, bylaws and stuff, because I think we, we put this as an opportunity in our in the bylaws, right? I think we listed that as mm -hmm. some things that we heard anything back. Well, there's, it's, it's a much broader issue now because of what we just, in the ongoing conversation, what we discovered about uh, even though we have volunteer firefighter departments, state law technically, well, not technically, classifies volunteer firefighters as municipal employees. So now there's the issue of if state law says municipal employees, are we allowed to have independent department bylaws? that are separating this group from the town personnel policy. So it's a much broader, bigger conversation to have as opposed to what we had before, which was just bylaws for each department and having the conversation of creating a master bylaws with individual appendices for each department so they can make their own decisions. But now it's untangling the issue of we really municipal employees and volunteer fire department that much. So that pops up a question. So would, would each department participate in this or would it just be the village? I'm going to invite them to be on the committee with us to develop them. Okay. Um, probably do uh, three from the village and one from each of the other departments unless they push for more participation, but I don't, I don't think it's needed to have more than the five. Yeah. Um, but uh, they could certainly adopt it as well um, and utilize it. Okay. Think of, you know, just geographically, you know. Well, they could have just one program that. Maybe one program that everybody participated in. I mean, as far as the training part of it. Or she does a pilot program. Yeah. The first year. Trying to see how it works, right? I think it depends, right? I mean, I guess if in our high school, we get kids from over the mountain back. That one would yeah. make many calls. So I think what. I'm sorry about that. Um, I think what I would like to do is, um, as Adolfo mentioned, there are uh, bylaw concerns and things like that with the other departments as far as town ownership, association stuff. I'd like our program not to be held up for that. So if we end up being the pilot program and then sort all the other stuff out and then have them sign on, they want to join that'd be right? great. But I think we can get ours done. What's I don't that? think you need the bylaws. No, I'm program. just using that as an example of of some, our bylaws got approved a year ago by us. Then we gave them to you, and now it's been a year. We don't have bylaws officially yet that have been voted on by this board because we're the, we're the only town owned department, essentially. Right? So if we do this program and then I have to wait another year, I'd like to find a way to avoid doing that right. if we can. Yeah, I, I'd love to see you guys move forward in this as quickly as you could. 
so I'm not to hold it up. Because so. I feel like and I, have, I haven't drafted to you of this document before your next meeting. So. Okay. To your point, I, I do feel that there's standing to make this independent of the bylaw process. I mean, this is two separate programs or two separate issues. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to go back to the in school. Good. There's a lot of people. Bless. <laughs> as long as the proficiency base grading is part of the evaluation. Now will track it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're more simple. It's fast fail. <laughs> Binary. Survey. <laughs> So next is uh, assessment and scope of fire operations. This is uh, the topic of looking at what Randolph needs for fire services versus what we have now and how we meet those needs. It's been a little challenging to get it to this point, I'll say. But, mm -hmm. um, but I think we're here, uh, the back of the handout as kind of the, this is the draft for the committee. This has been sent to the chiefs for comment. Um, basically, some of the comments I got back were not germane to the topic. Um, so I think we're good to go. Um, with it, what we don't have is the actual makeup of the committee yet. Um, I got the fireman's name from Randolph Center. But that's, but that's it. Um, this is a, a committee that I think we need to put a timeline on. Because I think we could spend years talking about this topic if we don't. Um, the scope is fairly specific here as far as scaled in. Um, and it's basically um, just looking at what we have and what we need and how we get there. Mm -hmm. The proposal is to take members of the fire departments um, and some members uh, at large uh, looking for folks that have some background in firefighting in a rural area. Uh, we do have some members of other fire departments that have been through similar exercises that I spoke to that are willing to come and they don't want to be on the committee, but they're willing to come in and talk about what they looked at, what their results were, what they kind of give us some lessons learned type of stuff um, and ways to look at it. I think it's going to require us to coordinate with Josh some because he's doing the inventory of businesses to look at what the risks are out there, mm -hmm. where they're located. Look at what it Josh. Jerome. Jerome. Or or economic 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 economic. Yeah. So tonight, just looking at whether we want to move forward with this. Um, under follow-up, should that be really committee members or is that staff? I think it's both. It's going to take some work from the town staff. It's going to take some work from the committee members. This is probably not a committee somebody gets on just to get out of the house on a Tuesday night because there's going to be some effort put into it. We're going to have to be looking at, at everything. You know, I think we've got some buildings and we've got some materials in those buildings right now that we may not be the best shape to address them. You know, our building materials today are different than they were 40, 50 years ago. As we keep building these large structures, it becomes an issue yep. in the town. And, you know, the ones on the front line are the ones that are at risk if we don't give them what they need. 
So from a from the fire chief's perspective, Tim, Kevin, and I have had a few discussions about it, um, and, and we we're concerned about what would be in the study. Not so much the, the charge of the committee, because at first we thought the committee was going to put together this, the, the scope force to go out to an RFP for somebody else to do the study, right? And so there's been some confusion on our end about what the committee is actually going to do. And so from us, initially, the information that we had sent uh, to Adolfo, and I think it made it to the board at some point, um, really focused on you know, distance to an appropriate water supply and things like that, so that way we could evaluate the fire services. Because I don't know if all of you have read the 99 scoping study, but it's very inadequate. Um, it doesn't address the actual service or the capabilities or the fire department. It, it was an inventory list. It was, you know, you should train three t more times a year, you should do this and that. Those are all things that the departments could have wrote on their own and, 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 and wasn't, to my, to my purpose, useful at all, period, except for now I know that a couple of trucks are out of date, which I probably already knew. Um, but going forward and, and, and really examining this, the capabilities and the needs of the community, there were things like distance to an appropriate water, dry hydrant. Two of the seven dry hydrants in East Randolph are, are no longer usable because the river's changed or the, you know, things like that have happened. Um, do we want the community to be isolated and, and to what degree? You've got to be a certain distance with an 1800 gallon per minute pumper in order to, to achieve the highest ISO rating. How many pumpers in the town are 1800 gallons rated? Two of them can do it, but they're not rated for it. It's you know, going into that higher gear. And, and looking at things like that to save the community money, you know, if we don't need uh, three departments, but we need 60 firefighters, that's one way to look at it, but it's not the objective and numbers way to look at it to say, we still need a department here and here because this is the closest to this water supply and they can get there in seven minutes, but this one uh, would take 14 minutes to get there. And when you talk about building materials, it's half to a third of the time from 40 years ago that you have to get out of your house now because of the building materials. It used to be 20 minutes approximately to get out of your house when a fire started because you use real wood, you use those things. And now you're using synthetic materials that burn hotter, quicker, that provide more noxious smoke than just wood smoke. And you have, I think it's eight to 10 minutes to get out of your house now. <coughs> Flash over in 12 minutes. And, and so those, those things are all important to consider. Plus you have industrial activities that um, we really don't have the time to go in and evaluate the MSDSs for these places. Um, we do propane training every couple of years. Um, we do things like that. We do pre-plants. But some of the materials that are being used in, in industrial uh, applications now, we don't want to add water to them. They get worse. Or you push it around, you make more smoke, you do these other things. And, and so from our perspective, we really would like that included in the study. And I don't know if the committee, any committee that we put together can provide that, or are they just putting together the scope to go out to RFP for somebody else to provide that service to the town? Yeah, so I, you know, and I think I've read this before, but I think one of my suggestions was that we bulletize the goals here, or the committee does, one of the first meetings, whoever that is, um, and says these are the things that we get to look at. Maybe that's when the fire chiefs get you know, invited in or something and say, hey, look, these are all the things that you need to consider. Flow rates, right? Amount of hose. How much water we have at the hydrant at the end of the deal versus how much is at the fire station rate, pump mill, and stuff. And so that makes me uh, nominate two different people to do those. You know, somebody who's more te technically capable versus somebody who's more aware of the service but not technically capable. So if you could give us a little insight onto what is the charges committee, then I think we can help it move it forward and you get more of recommendations from people. So my understanding this wasn't to generate an RFP. This was all, it was decided to do this all in town with this committee, just like, the, or similar to what the uh, police committee was chartered. But again, I think this is way more science than the police committee. There's more science to this than there is in the police district, for sure. Whether it goes to an RFP and needing a 
consultant type service to help with it or it doesn't. I think you have to have that steering committee, that main committee that's going to look at, these are what we got to do, here's what we need to do to deliver that. And I think that's the level we're at right now. So we need to get that first group together to flush out, this is what we're trying to do, how do we approach that best? What do we have for resources that we can do at the town level versus what type of the help do we need? And then you might have subcommittees, you might have other things that oversee this type of effort. And, you know, do we need that consultant to help us with these pieces of it, but not everything? I don't know what the answer is, but I, I think we've got to do it, and I think we've got to do it right. I don't think this is something that we just go at halfway, because okay. we're the one, in the end, it's, we're not doing any service to anybody if we're not prepared and we don't have what we need. I can share with the board, it, 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 it would like to instill a sense of urgency in establishing either steering committee or commencing the process because we do have an aged fleet and we do have several of our fire chiefs that have mentioned that they want upgrades to their vehicles, but from my perspective, I wouldn't be able to recommend to this select board the purchase of new vehicles if we haven't yet performed the study that can tell us whether we have sufficient equipment or not, not enough of it. So the, the longer the process takes to start, the longer it is that we could tell our fire chief, well, you know, you know you need, yes, you need more, or no, you don't need more. Or what you need. Or what you need, how to move it around. Because what they're looking at today may not be what mm -hmm. is really needed. We may need to move a truck from one station to another and put a different type of vehicle in the fleet of, of one of them. It's just, I don't think we know the answer. Right? Because in residential homes even, the materials in residential homes burn scary. You know, we're building homes that are, they have no wood in them, none. And the plastic melts quick and black. It's just, I think we're in a whole different world. Anyway. We have a mix of inventory, that's for sure. We've got 1800 houses and we've got brand new stuff, so it's all, yeah. it's all on the board. And you could have one start a fire and the other and be dealing with both at the yeah. same time. So, yeah, no, I, I think this is the place to start and if the committee decides that you need to go to a more professional level to and then you do, an assessment do a and scope and yeah. get a cost estimate for it and yeah. bring it back to the select board to say, hey, do we have X number of dollars to hire somebody to give us this data? I can't sit at my computer and write up everything, how it's going to go. And then I've been in the firefighting world from the support side for 32 years now. But not on the front lines. I get to wash the clothes that come off the front lines. <laughs> 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 and some of them are pretty bad, but... I'm all for getting started. I think we need to get... Mm -hmm. So how many more people need to be nominated? I mean, how many do you have? That fill fit the gaps. There's mm -hmm. one. Right. You just, well, there's one fire. <laughs> right there. um, I think I, you, I think one. you have two, but I think the request was not to be chiefs, right? Well, so, my concern is that you're setting up a committee to look at what is going on out there and whatnot. Definitely need the input of the chiefs, but when you form a report from a committee making recommendations to the town having the chiefs and a couple select board members sit down and give a list to the town of stuff they have to buy it really doesn't go over well. No, I understand that. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that yeah. criteria. And I think the chiefs will probably be there and there'll probably be other people there too. I, you know, I think it's definitely a topic that's got at least 60 people's attention. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, and you need it. You need all that input. You just somehow you got to harness it into working group that's going to be able to give us something better than what we got the last time. So you think this timeline is reasonable? Six months? 
hopefully we'll come back in six months and see. Yeah, but I mean, happens. I think I think it is. I mean, I think if you get started going into winter, it seems like you know probably the spring release could probably get a lot done. And they roll around the spring. Seems like you have at least some sense of what direction we need to go in next. So I think that's a pretty reasonable timeline. Get the ball rolling. So what do we have for select board members at one play? I think right there, right? Except for the left center doesn't want too many village people appointed. Well, you're not the village. <laughs> Look, I'm not a cop, He's nor not a an American. <laughs> He's not the village. Oh, he's not the village. He's he's rural. I know, I know, but he's rural. I'm just saying he's in the rural area. I can reach out to a Green Tree Select Board member or Select Board Chair and ask her to make a recommendation as quickly as possible. So the goal is to be able to appoint this committee by the next meeting? That's the goal? If we could at least approve the committee. Yeah. And then we'll get the names out there. If we can get the names out ahead of time, we'll That'd be nice. Yeah. Okay. Get things start putting people together. It's not going to be an easy. This one's going to be a challenging one. Again, how many of you think you're going to do? One member of each department. Two select boards. Six. One brain Nine, three, nine three, total. Seven. Seven. I definitely wanted to do it, but because I, mean, I have an interest, but I don't want to sway you know, how the perception is swaying, but I'm typically impartial, but not always. <laughs> Some sort of human being or something? <laughs> yeah, I know. expertise in fire, I could serve in sharing expertise with research for oh, um, processes and exactly, I provide, I could be the staff for the committee. It's going to be a lot of data, yeah. too, as we look at To the select board to amend the land use regulations. Um, there were several amendments that were that were proposed. Um, one was to change the uh, the use and use type for the Randolph Village District, uh, and it would be for commercial group services and then also for industrial light. 
Uh, and then also made two changes to um, one for a definition for the um, independent living facility as, as listed in land use regulations and then also one a change to the description of assisted living and independent living facilities in the land use regulations. Um, if the select board has any comments to make or if it would like to continue with the process, the idea would be to, or the process would be to set a public hearing uh, 16 days as of today, uh, at least, uh, and no greater than 120 days to uh, continue with the process. And to give you a little bit more background, the process was started to amend the land use regulations due to an existing non-conforming use building use randoff that is potentially in the process of being purchased to establish a new business in, in, in the town. It's under PNS yeah. right now, and this is one of the What's PNS and sales? Purchase and sales. Purchase and sales. And it's, um, this is one, getting this changed is one of the conditions of yeah. sale. Oh, yes. so. If we were, if the select board were to agree to hold a hearing before, within 16 days of today, it would certainly fall within the purchase and sale requirement. And I believe the purchase and sale date is October, the first week of October. Uh, where the regulations were changed so that the business could then move into the, the building itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the soonest we could do the hearing if we don't want to do a weekend, which I would push for, would be the 30th of September. The actual wording of the amendments. Uh, yes. No. The earliest one yes. is you said. Well, the the early early yes. in one of yeah. Yeah. The actual wording that was given to us by. I can do. Um, I can't do the thirtieth. I can do the first. Julie second, and, and then I'm gone uh, the week after. Jim Carter. That's the one for the And the week after. One of more than. Yeah. 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 Everything's happening. <laughs> Everybody's doing something. Actually, what? I, mean, I, can, I, mean, I mean, if we're just going to hold the hearing, then you could we do it for anybody? <laughs> well, I can do it over again. I mean, I can call in too. I mean, I've done that before, so. Yeah, I think the first available date is on the 27th, September, Friday. Uh, somebody must have mentioned that, but I missed it. That puts us pretty close. To get, we got to get the ad in the paper, at least online, right? Uh, we yeah, have to put it, it in the paper. Um, I could send it to the Herald tomorrow for printing on the 19th. Um, but as long as we do that on the bulletin boards and whatnot, it's going to yeah. be posted. So yeah. I was giving you that extra day. I said Monday. Monday the 30th, yeah, we can do that. We have a few people available on the first. Is the first work? It's work for you, Matt. Mm -hmm. October 1st. Oops, you know. We also have been advertising the, the proposed changes for <coughs> a considerable amount of time now because of the planning, the planning commission's hearing. We did put the proposed changes in the Herald we have had the land use regulation draft at the clerk's office for full inspection by anyone. So, um, yes, we, we, we advertised it. We had no one come in to express comments during the public, uh, uh, public the PC's hearing, so. Yeah. This amendment only requires all these amendments, only one hearing from our board. At least one hearing, yes. Just one here. If we change it, if we make a material change to it, then we have to have another hearing. Another hearing. Yeah. So time. The later you do is better for me. You want me to call in, so. I could also suggest that if the, this board is holding the hearing on that day, that it could also hold a special meeting immediately following the hearing to, if there aren't any changes requested, there aren't any comments, the board can then accept the changes proposed by the Planning Commission and then part the 21 day period starts as of that day. There's a 21 day wait period that's necessary after right. the board 
on the anxiety and regulation. It's an appeal mm -hmm. process. Yeah. But the the PNS, the purchase and sale agreement, doesn't speak to that point. It just requires the town to take steps to change the language. You're going to have to call me to buy it. Yeah, I can call in. That's fine. You can do it every time you want. 530 on the first clerk. Okay. Yes. Yep. And then also a meeting afterward or just to hear? Yep. Okay. You get us all in here. <laughs> so that's that part. So some of these typos will be fixed. Right. Uh, yes, we'll make we'll make changes. Yes, that need to be made. Right. And all the things that are people have to change themselves. I guess. Different Casella. I am your Casella. Come on up. My voice still work. <laughs> In all fairness, I did tell John that he would be uh, at the end. So uh, if I need to go later, that's fine. No, 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 no. I meant, I meant that. You're next. Yeah. 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 You know, I'd, I'd ask him if, if you didn't want to hear the whole thing to not arrive at five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for having me tonight. It's good to see you. You all having some fun here in the late hour. <laughs> thank you for your laughs. Why did you think we were having fun? <laughs> oh, yeah? You got to have it where you can, right? <laughs> it definitely does. Anyone else need one? I like your pants, by the way. <laughs> you have the same pants, I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm John Skates. I'm with Casella. It's good to see you all again. I think I was here probably about a year ago. Um, and I came here today to talk about the Randolph Transfer Station and our intention to propose a, uh, an upgrade to the facility, uh, to the decking and the compactor area specifically. Nothing with the building. It's all on the, uh, the area where the trash happens, so to speak. I've uh, been talking with Adolfo, like Mr. Bidon, for the last couple of months about our plans. We would like to, uh, we'd like to uh, we see a couple benefits here. Uh, one for, for us, which is very nice because it's going to ultimately pay for this upgrade and there's not going to be a cost uh, that we're coming here to ask you for to help out with this project. Um, uh, the benefit, another benefit as well would be that uh, there's a safety component of this as well. If, you, if you've been to the facility, you know that we run uh, a truck down there and we park it over to the left of the entrance to collect all the trash, whether it's residents or it's uh, local haulers. Uh, that is that's kind of an older archaic method that ultimately comes with a increased risk at, at my division at Casella, which I operate in the northeastern quadrant of Vermont. We have about 30 trucks a day running around. We pay we pay uh, over $100,000 a year in workers' comp. Uh, the risk to our employees and ultimately the public is a very big deal for us, and there's lots of business interest in making that safety costs come down. It's good for everybody to go home with all their parts and pieces as well. Um, the transfer station itself, there's been an opportunity that we noticed a couple of years ago to try to get that truck uh, that goes down there three days a week retired. That's ultimately where the cost, not seeing that truck and turning it into a compactor, an extra compactor for the trash uh, to keep on the site would, would be what we're coming to propose. Uh, there's, as you know, um, and I'll kind of get into these, these diagrams too because I think they help illuminate what I'm talking about. There's a recycling compactor on the right, as you know. There's a cardboard compactor that's 90 degrees off. We'd like to turn that one the same as the recycle to send it the same direction. And then if you move to the next slot, so to speak, you, there would be a trash compactor of a larger size with a ramp next to it that would be about 56, 60 inches high so that small haulers could, away from residents, be able to back up that side and dump their trash directly into that compactor's hopper. And we'd have a gate uh, so that residents wouldn't be able to throw their stuff in while that's happening. Kind of the same process. You can't do both at one time now anyways. Uh, but for that safety piece as well, we'd like to have that interlock there for people. Uh, on the residents' side, we'd like to have a uh, have all the parking happen on the front end for basic trash and recycling. There'd be a ramp on the right, which is six feet wide for people to walk up. And the deck height would be just like it is now. 
uh, and that would approach the the, uh, the hopper of those three compactors. So you could still do the recycling, you could still do the, tr the uh, cardboard, and then you could go over and do the trash on the side here. And the ramp would be kind of centralized um, per that top diagram. So that top diagram is our proposed changes to the site. The second page of the, uh, is a diagram of the overall site, just to kind of jog your memory about where everything is and where it is in relation to everything. <clears throat> and then the follow-on pages are the site today. And I thought I'd just walk you through the pages real quick in case you had any questions about where things would lay out. And there's two more little points I wanted to hit up on as we go through those. So if you go to the first picture page, <clears throat> From the back side of the facility, you see the back ramp walk up. Uh, so that that walk up is starting to bow. It's the wood there is is uh, decaying, it's rotting. Uh, you can I don't want to say it's dangerous now because that's not what it is. But looking ahead, I'm thinking about the snow loads on it. I'm thinking about the safety of that roof in the future and proposing that that goes away. That roof is nice to have. It helps cover the area and ultimately help people, help us prevent slips on that ramp. But the ramp itself needs work. The roof itself either needs reinforcing or replacing. We looked at purchasing a roof to go over this project, but the cost of that was going to be a lot higher. Um, so we are not proposing that. Instead, we're looking to minimize the walking areas so that we can help make sure it maintain in the winter, especially with plowing, the salting, um, to make sure that stays safe for our attendance and for residents. That's that picture. This, the second picture here is we have the contractor uh, markup on the walk, on the current walkway, where the new walkway would be. So, as you can see there, uh, as you look into that uh, cardboard compactor, that's where the walkway would would go a little bit further over to the trash, uh, but right where the walkway is today. So there's not a huge change in actual location of where people would go. And then the third picture is the parking area where, where residents would go. And what I wanted to point out was where that staircase is over there, which we're gonna get rid of staircase, because that's just one more thing to slip and fall on and really injure, injure yourself on is that's going to be, uh, first of all, it's going to move toward the camera in that picture uh, to come down probably in front of that, uh, somewhere in between the camera point of view and that power, the power uh, panels. So it'll be centralized. When you walk up, it'll be centralized to those compactors. Easy to access one to the right or to the left or on the middle. <clears throat> and then also on this side of that ramp to be would be a shack, attendant shack, where our attendants could be more present in the front to be ready to take money, to answer questions, or to help people, uh, to get the, make sure the material gets up the ramp as efficiently as possible. Instead of, I don't, I don't really like their presence always in the garage where it is today. Uh, I feel like I'd, I'd like to have our attendants. In most other stations, that we have, most other transfer stations where we have back drop-offs, our attendants are much more front and center of, so they're easy to access, easy to ask questions, and less of like, is anybody here? Which I, don't, I haven't heard that concern, but generally speaking, I think it's better business to be <laughs> easy to spot where help is. So that is the, that is by and large the change that we're looking to do. That includes a concrete, if you go back to the front sheet, it, it includes a nice large rectangular concrete pad. On that pad is built that, that red decking. That's all the wood in the project is that red decking. And then the, uh, on the pad would be two new slots for the two new compactors. Is the new ramp going to be covered? The new, which the ramp? New, the new walk-up deck? deck? Yeah. No, it's not, it's not project, it's not a, it's not designed to be covered at this time. So your folks will shovel it? Yes, and I think it. By, by making there only one way up, right now there's a staircase in the front, which is, I don't like for safety reasons, and then there's the ramp in the back. Uh, but making it one way to walk up gives our, our people and the attendants no excuse. That one way needs to be perfectly maintained. <clears throat> our guy actually did fall last year uh, beyond that ramp. 
the, the long ramp on the parking lot area, just having to throw salt over such a large square footage. You know, people are parking in the front and they're parking in the back, which they do now and they have been. Uh, that's, you gotta salt and plow. I mean, we can plow it, it's not a problem, but you gotta salt and shovel all that. And if you miss a little spot of it, that's that's more risk, so. Our guy did fall last, last year. Unfortunately, that's one of those workers comp cases that we don't want to have to deal with. We don't want him to have to deal with. It's just not good for anybody. Currently, is no. There currently is no way for anyone who is physically unable to climb steps to get to the trash disposal area or the, the recycling area at the very least, recycle in the wood area because the ramp that exists presently leads to two steps that have to be climbed up. Mm. And then the only other other access point is four steps that have to be climbed up. So and that has been an issue that has been reported to us over and over again. And so when somebody, they, somebody's disabled, do they get help with unloading? Uh, anyone that needs help uh, is encouraged to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, someone brought up a good idea today that we don't really employ anywhere, but I could see this being a good situation to try it out to see if it's something that works for the town and and our attendance is like just some carts like a couple a trash cart or two a recycle cart or two at the bottom of the ramp so that if we do have someone that's disabled or just really has a tough time going up up the ramp or if our people are just too busy to be efficient in helping everyone in a timely manner uh, there's a couple ways they can just dump it into the carts and then when we get free moments in the day or at the end of the day, we can wheel those up, dump it right in, because we'll be at that height where you can just dump it in. The only question is, currently the truck, I assume on Saturdays, whatever days there, takes the trash away. Mm -hmm. This compactor, how long does the trash stay on site? Oh, if it were in this compact that yeah. they're proposing? Uh, based off the tonnage, it, would, it looks like it would go probably every seven to 10 days. So it's a larger compactor. I mean, we want to minimize the number of right. runs we do. But that's that would be about the time. And it closes up. It's it's in an enclosed yeah, it's compactor. It the doors sealed, so. the door is ratchet ratchet tight. Um, and then the slug of the compactor, the actual piece that pushes the trash into the receiver box, could be closed such that there's no animals that can get into or out of uh, that that package. And it helps contain the, the so mess and the smell. Like smell. No, yeah. we have these at, at several other towns. If you'd like to consult with them and right. talk about it. I think this is all being proposed at no cost to the town. So, yeah, and in full disclosure, of, to do the construction, we'd have to, we'd have to uh, take out the two of the compactors, or I'm sorry, one of the compactors that's there now, and we'd probably run, continue to run the truck in the meantime, um, and then put some open top boxes for recycling. That would be an option. I mean, but it's gonna there be a traffic issue during that during that construction process that we we want to work through. So. On my the construction, what, three weeks? the contractor is very uh, adamant that they can get in there late in this month. Um, I'm thinking that October mm -hmm. they'd be finished up. So Great. I'd like that to be the case. Although mm -hmm. I'm not in the business of predicting many things, and no, construction, no. construction completion dates is definitely one of those things. But the goal was predict. the goal was to get it done before winter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm coming here for your approval to. to for the project and, and its concept, uh, we would take care of the state permit. Uh, the, the contractor would engage you about the local permits, and I think I think that would cover most of anything we need to do. And uh, any updates you'd like, uh, I'm not only getting ahead of myself, but <laughs> I'm <laughs> very excited about it. So if you have any other questions or anything, please feel free. To... I have a couple of questions. Sure. I'm having a hard time reconciling these two diagrams. It, and you're looking at the detail of this one, so. This is what we're proposing. Okay. This was a week and a half ago where we were. Okay. And so it's, it's a little bit different. So with you've the, changed the, the decking. From here. Okay. Right, that decking was reduced. We really tried to get rid of the high decking such that um, it was less to, less to maintain. Okay. And it's not really necessary to have it go off to the, the end of that truck ramp. So that's the part that we got, or one of the parts that we got rid of. And so if somebody, <clears throat> like right now, if someone comes with a significant amount of garbage, just mm -hmm. a, a homeowner, mm -hmm. they can just take it out of their car and very easily shove it into the truck that's there. With this plan, you're looking at walking it up a 30-foot ramp 
for each for each bag we have to bring, it's going to be a much more cumbersome process to get trash in the hopper here than to get trash in the um, the garbage truck we have now. So this, if I could answer, it would just preface what you will say mm -hmm. in that uh, it's, it's a bit of a wild west next to the truck. If someone, people typically park the, you know, park I'm not saying it's the, ideal. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this is going to be a lot more time consuming for people to drop off, you know, multiple bags of trash. Um, well, there's two accesses, right? There's, there's the walk-up ramp, which is in red, mm -hmm. uh, where people with one or two bags can go up that or have help with our attendance. Or if they do have a truck, uh, like a pickup truck full of stuff they want to get rid of, they can, we can it's give them access. not just specifically for any local hauler. Right. That could be anybody who's going to be anyone that, that thinks it would be easier with the loan yeah. they have to go okay. up that, that yeah. drive up ramp. Uh, and there'll be a curb that's, that'll be yay high. It's eight, six inches. So that worst case, their back tires will boom, hit it, and then they can't go into the into the, into the actual compactor hopper. So that'd be an interesting way to get rid of their junk car. Pull the trash and just dump the whole. It's not going to be cheap now. though. <laughs> Trees truck that is cheap. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Agree with it. I like it. We were thinking the same thing. <laughs> All right. I, I have one more. Thing. One more. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm unconvinced that an uncovered ramp is safer than a covered ramp. In in uh, in, the in what regard? In the winter time. In in the winter time? Yeah. It sounds like more work. To maintain it. Um, so the they have to maintain quite. We quiet. don't maintain it, and we're not responsible for the insurance or the accidents or. For all that, so we'll have to staff it. Yeah, to right, but we don't want our taxpayers to get hurt either. No, right, but they'll I have don't. to staff it to keep it. I was just clean. throwing that out. It's yeah. hard for me to believe that's yeah, easy so is, to maintain. Is that well? It sounds like some of the decking's going away, though. All right. So, is there, do you know what the total square footage reduction or increase is? Okay. Um. I'll get rid of the ramp that's there. The large ramp that's there would that's go away gone, entirely. Right. And the, the other walkways are decked. As would the, the land that's, we wouldn't have anyone that would need to go on the land behind it. So right. that's really been a large, it's it's like it's like this room. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's a lot to maintain. Well, if anyone's parking here, there, 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 this all has to be. So it's, it's less, less, ice. less square footage to maintain in, in this design. Yes, the actual decking oh, itself so is, is uncovered, right? the actual decking itself is a, is about the same as today, uh, but the approach being one approach gives us complete control over making sure that we keep up with the weather if it's still coming down on us or if it's melting and freezing again. Uh, there's no excuse why we couldn't have that one ramp maintained to where there's no there's a little minimized risk. Um, as as far as being covered. Uh, the roofs, roofs really add up quick in, in cost, and I, I originally warmed a roof over the project, uh, but I mean, we were talking like another 30000 and I guess frankly, that's an issue you have to it, And frankly, yeah, I can throw, I can throw a lot of labor at, at the problem for $30,000, so. It's so. like about 300 square feet, so versus taking care of two areas because mm -hmm. you know when the garbage truck was there you gotta take care of that space around that truck. That's true. Also. Yeah. So yeah. it's like yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not yeah. seeing a big difference. All right. Ready? I'll make a motion to approve Casella's uh, request for redeveloping the transfer station. Second. Put it in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for your time. Really Thanks appreciate it. Thanks for getting me on the agenda. Appreciate it. And if you have any questions, send them my way, please. And I'll let you know as the contractor lets us know what their dates are. And I, you'll, you'll be the one to deliver it to the board. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Have a great night. Uh, I didn't send that. I'll get one to the ERP. I'll get one to the ERP. I'll get one to the ERP.
Thank you. Thank you. Did you? I just want to double check with the permitting me. portion. No, it may be permitted to get into the dust. Maybe I'll put it in the site. I'd have to take a look and see what the requirements are. I'll work with the permitting process. I just want to make sure that doesn't. Hold on. So this will be the new one. Oh, look at that. I've got 525 in. Well, by God, I can fix that right now. Yeah. 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 Can you fix it so it's on the like, computer? <laughs> I don't even know why it does that. You probably have like 100 seconds. All right, grants, the library, oh, inter no, library loan career grant. 390 bucks. This, uh, One of my favorites. Good job. Thanks. You know, this, uh, you know, I knew you were going to be excited about this. You know what I'm going to do is. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make the recommendation to the governor's office. They consolidate all these little library grants into one. So try that. I only did it for an hour. Either. In the interest of not spending a lot of time, just, unless people want to discuss this, we've seen this in the Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sure, you don't want to talk about it? No. <laughs> Fire Protection Task Force Grant. Uh, this request had uh, been made by Chief Taylor. Uh, we were not able to receive any additional information from him, so uh, we could ask just to postpone uh, this for a future meeting. It's in relation to a dry hydrant that they're hoping to have installed at some point. This is one of Troy Dares. That's right, yeah. Sounds like some of the dry hydrants are dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not far from it. Yeah. Some need repaired. Yeah. Sure. Any the pipes to work? I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, just how far are you going to dig to find where the grass is? I think there's a couple of those. Because of Irene. Mm. Okay. Northern Borders Grant. This is a ratification from an action the board had taken earlier this month. This is to accept the 400 and $50,000 grant. Mm. Uh, this is part of the reservoir and... Oh, process. yes, the... Water, water service projects uh, related to the new reservoir and new wells to improve the water quality in the town. Do you need a motion for that? We do. Motion to ratify. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Carries. Borek Grant. We finally received um, the Boric Grant Agreement uh, issued by uh, Agency of Natural Resources. Uh, the agreement uh, memorializes the grant that had been awarded to the town for the work that would be performed to create new trails, new maps, 3D maps, uh, essentially to continue to advertise uh, uh, outdoor cycling uh, and recreation uh, through Rasta, our partner. Uh, the grant amount is for $65,000. Um, a and R has been a good partner to the town in terms of working out crafting the, the agreement that is before you. Uh, there were some initial proposals to install some uh, long-term time frames as well as financial penalties to property owners that are going to be hosting some of the, the trails that are going to be built. And our listen to uh, the town, they listen to our partner Rasta, and, and agreed that they would eliminate those those penalties and also the long term requirements. So, what's uh, in front of you for review has been crafted over the last several months and includes considerable in input from Rasta and from the town. Mm, no other business for me today. Mm -hmm. 
I'll keep it brief. <laughs> <laughs> I keep I like to give a new piece of paper out there. We'll take it away, right? <laughs> yeah, a small one. So so, a bill. Super brief. You're hurting your credibility. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I have had on my to-do list uh, for quite some time is to have a conversation with uh, BTC about their EMT program and how it could potentially work to uh, help uh, Northfield rescue if we are to enter into a long-term agreement with them. I have a call scheduled uh, with PPC uh, next week so we could have a conversation about the EMT program and how it could help to augment services offered through Northfield Rescue if, again, the town is to establish ambu ambulance service with, with Northfield. Um, so I'll have more to share with the board after I have that conversation. Uh, we are continuing to push direct deposit uh, requirements to town employees and, in this case, the fire departments. Uh, we're going to be working with the chiefs to provide notification that they are classified as municipal employees and to fall into the direct deposit category. Um, so we're having those conversations with uh, personnel. What's the savings? Dollar amount. What's the savings dollar? What does that save the town? Because, yeah, anyway. I don't have that answer, but I can. I can yeah, it'd be interesting to know yeah. what the real savings is for paying once a year, twice a year. Sure. That way. I think it's 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 more about just remaining consistent with everyone in the town as opposed to individual savings for one group. But I, I'll give you an answer. Absolutely. Um, East Valley Days in East Randolph uh, was held this past weekend. It was very successful. Um, everyone who participated thought it was a great. Uh, great event. Um, I attended, brought a friend from out of town, and they loved just seeing the community out there. Uh, flea Market as well was active in a different section, but also um, saw a lot of people stop by and make purchases. Um, the uh, Planning Commission is hoping to have uh, ongoing conversations about updating the land use regulations to make sure that our land use regulations are up to date, that they are as friendly as can be, as well as um, uh, as land sensitive as they can be. So uh, we're going to continue to have those conversations. Um, our PC chair also asked that I share with the board that in addition to the land use regulation review, uh, the PC is hoping to also review the sign ordinance so that um, our sign ordinance is also up to date and not uh, as old as it is now. Uh, we are still in the process of searching for a zoning administrator. Um, I, I, I'm uh, working on the duties as best I can. Uh, we haven't had any issues with permits um, yet. Uh, I don't see us having any issues. We're actually entering a slower time for permits. Um, we've kept up with them as best we could. Everything seems to be operating smoothly, but the search will continue. We're also exploring ways to potentially keep the zoning administrator's duties um, to existing staff members so we could reassign duties and we could have a zoning administrator be full-time uh, rather than hire a uh, part-time zoning administrator who would only be here 20 hours a week. The zoning administrator duties could fall to someone in town who's here full-time to deal with those, those uh, requests for help and potentially hire someone who, do, who can do administrative tasks to help that person. Um, so this way you could also have a way to share that one administrative person uh, the, the zoning department, as well as finance, as well as everywhere else in town hall. So, so that's another way to try to mainstream the way we do things in town hall, as well as making sure that the zoning administrator is in town hall when um, <coughs> town hall is open. So. Adolfo, yep. just one thing I'd like you to keep in mind when we're talking about this is the relationship that Marty had with the Water Wastewater Committee. Yeah. Um, she was really instrumental in providing technical, you know, feedback and keeping things organized and her knowledge of the system and the town was it hard, would be hard to overstate the helpfulness of having her at those meetings. So just to keep in mind like how changing that position will affect that community. Well, Margaret held two positions. She was actually a town engineer and a oh, three, right. So she was town engineer and zoning administrator. I think that was the town engineer position. Yeah. That she was, that's where she was helpful for okay. that kind of stuff. That's what she oversaw the construction of the right. wastewater right. and yeah. highway projects and stuff was yeah. as town engineer. 
And she was the tree warden. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. We are hoping Sign to have our, our, Sign our yeah. 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 any 911 coordinator as well. I don't think she's tree warden. No, no, it's uh, currently Rob Reynolds. But we are exploring options or discussing ways of contracting out the town engineer duties. Uh, we have spoken to local engineering firms to ask them what typically they would charge to have like a master agreement in place where we could send to them forms to review, uh, check formulas. But if, if the firm... Provide support like Larry's talking about. Yeah. If the firm is local, we could potentially find a way to have them provide support at the meeting or through telephone. Um, but it really depends on you know, crafting the actual RFP that goes out on the type of duties that we would like for them to perform. I have a feeling that uh, we have budgeted throughout the multiple departments uh, $8,000 in total for engineering costs. Um, but I have a feeling that $8,000 will would go very quickly if we were to contract out services. Plus it introduced conflict of interests uh, for them too. So if they're the town engineer, they may not be able to bid on those jobs. Yeah, project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. but whatever the issue is, uh, or whatever the, the path moving forward, we'll certainly look at all the committees that we, uh, that Marty's staff, PC, DRB, Water Waste Water Committee, and if we are to hire an administrative person to do the work, they would have to be as knowledgeable with the committee structures as the person doing the job, so they could potentially service support staff for the committees. Okay. Okay. We also did 911. E911, that's right there. Which has been fun. <laughs> we can do that in the spare time. Yeah. Take it home. Um, Stagecoach and the town have had ongoing mm -hmm. conversations about installing, potentially installing new stagecoach bus stop signs throughout the town. They're looking to expand service um, along School Street and a few other locations where they have noticed that there is an increase for, for th their service. Um, so we're working with them to make sure that we can put uh, stagecoach stop signs uh, throughout the town and not violate our existing ordinance. Um, we reached out to VTrans to, to ask them if they have any guidance on installing stagecoach signs uh, along right of ways. They uh, responded to me and said that they don't. So. Uh, unless there are any objections internally with our ordinance, we can work with them and say, okay, you can install stage codes, stop signs, stop the town. Who from the town is responsible for, for evaluating and <coughs> validating the need for the stops? Not for the stops. We don't have that function to evaluate the need for the stops. That would, that would come from stagecoach because they're independent of them. They could determine if... It's kind of a self-looking ice cream cone, though. Right, because the more stops they create, the more money they get from the, well, the right, more, more funding stops they get. The slower the route is, the less people take it too. So they want to make more stops than they have to, but they want to make the right number. It's always a balancing act with transit on where you stop because you have, you lose time each stop you make. So you want the prime spots. The unless challenge it, unless, though, I think, unless it gets you the opportunity to buy a new bus. and hire another person and charge more money. Well, we watch whether they run around empty or not. Well, that's what I was asking you. And then they got performance numbers they have to meet. And if they don't okay. meet them, then they go into a one-year probation and have to evaluate and make changes to I guess try to get point. that who's, ridership. Who's looking at that? But the problem is that most towns like have to empty. approve stops that are on public streets, which the majority of them are, mm -hmm. because you don't want them Stop right in the middle of downtown, mm -hmm. stopping in the road and those things. Yeah. So, um, didn't we hear there, they wanted to change the parking out in front of, across from Dubois and King there in the Raybuck house? Uh, we they, did work with them. They, they came in and did a presentation yeah. on why, why that parking wasn't needed and how they wouldn't conflict with traffic mm -hmm. and stuff. But I don't know that we want to get into approving every one of their stops. Somebody ought to put on the highway, uh, look at it to make sure what they're putting up isn't a maintenance issue. Yeah. The goal of sharing the information like, with the board today was to, if there were any comments or suggestions or objections, that we could go back to them and say, you know. I was just we, curious how it's yeah. monitored, validated. I can tell them moving forward that they would have to work with, again, they've informed us that they want to do this. We could connect them with Bill. <laughs> 
for the highway department and say if it's a problem the for highway then you know we'd have to come back to the board or if there's a problem with the sheriff's department with stopping traffic in certain areas then they would have to come back to the board but otherwise we'll work with them uh, and the last thing uh, that I have for now is that um, we've continued the conversation of uh, an appointed uh, lister and clerk as opposed to elected list uh, I'm sorry not uh, appointed lister but uh, an appointed assessor position as opposed to having the lister's office and the appointed uh, treasurer clerk um, what I would like to do is in the October meeting to the select board bring more information for you to consider, uh, more information for you to ask questions about the process. And if the board at that point would decide to continue with, with um, moving from elected listers and treasurer clerk to, one, to appointed positions, that we could potentially have three public meetings between now and the time the warrant uh, for town meeting is built in January. One could be held at the end of October, another public meeting in November, and the last public meeting in December, just before uh, the, the warrant is, is crafted. Uh, so people could have input, we could have the OCT attend, we could present different types of scenarios. But don't we want to delay the clerk treasurer till 21? We could do it at two. We could stagger it. Um, Joyce did share with me that there is state statute, and I don't have the statute uh, with me, but the, the statute is that if the voters at town meeting authorize a change to appointed uh, treasurer, uh, I believe it's just the treasurer and not the clerk, or it could be a combination of the two. It's the clerk. The clerk. Within 45 days, the select board would have to appoint a clerk. Uh, to fill the position. Um, there could be something on the ballot that says the if we do, if the select board chooses to do both at the same time, they could say that the position is changing from elected to appointed. The position will remain Joyce Mizuko's position until she chooses to retire next year. So this way it's done at one time as opposed to mm -hmm. staggered every year. Um, so there is that option. What, I don't understand what you're saying. That she would be appointed to be clerk until until she chose to retire, which would be uh, now it is up in the air. I know she mentioned that she's trying to decide whether it would be in 2021 or sooner. So, not going anywhere. Right? Not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, but she said no. <laughs> so we could certainly do it one year. The assessor listers the second year, it could be the treasurer clerk, but um, if we're going through the process, maybe we're throwing it both at the same time. Yeah. It's up to the board. I'll have more information to share with you next month. What's your plan with the Lister's office after October 1st? Or it's, my next month? It was hard enough to have a second Lister you know, step up to be appointed in Dennis. Um, you know, we are losing at um, the, the, the idea is to try to find a replacement um, if, we, if, if one is needed. Um, Dennis says he's looking to stay as a lister um, until we need him, uh, but not long term, uh, at least another year. Um, and it seems like his timeline would tie in well for transitioning from an elected lister's position to an appointed assessor position, or, or in some capacity, uh, a change whether it be we appoint an assessor or he contract with an, assess an assessment firm. Uh, he's he's willing to stay with us until we make that transition. In terms of finding somebody else to fill Ed's position, it's a little harder to do. It was very difficult to find Dennis. So, so is there anything stopping us from hiring an assessor now? Uh, Budget-wise, but we do have Ed's salary as soon as he retires to use for paying an assessor. So we could, we could do that. We could hire well, the assessor now, and then the problem is that in March, whoever say they don't want to get rid of the listers, they want to keep them as elected. Yeah. That's a good challenge. Though.
you know, I think people understand the struggle because nobody seems to be stepping up the plate to get elected, so I can't believe the voters would hope to continue the process when it's not working. Uh, I just have to explain that clearly. If we hadn't found Dennis, he wouldn't have been able to report to the yeah, state. It took a little arm twisting. Yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds like we'll discuss it next month. Yep. And that's all I have for it. It was brief. See? Well, we for the managers. It was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> it's as long as it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. So I make a motion to do executive.